Hello everyone and welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. And today I have a very special guest with a very special bottle, the second release in the Angel's Envy Cellar Collection, which is a Kentucky straight bourbon finished in tawny port barrels. <laughs> Jason C. And my special guest here today is Jim Shannon from the Bourbon Road Podcast, who was kind enough to bring this bottle for review. Thanks, Jim. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this new and amazing bottle from Angel's Envy? Absolutely. Well, you know, the Bourbon Road Podcast was fortunate enough to be invited to Angel's Envy uh, to attend a media event on the release of the new Sellers Collection from Angel's Envy. And uh, Wes Henderson and his sons were, uh, were able to present us with this new Sellers Collection release. A little bit different from their standard offering. Okay. Uh, you know, this one, uh, you know, their standard offering is uh, is finished in uh, ruby port wine barrels. And then this one, at cask strength, or near cask strength, is finished in tawny port barrels. So when you went to the event, what was the, the difference between tawny and their standard ruby port? So port, you know, a lot of bourbon people might, might understand the, the difference between, you know, different types of port wine and we got a little bit of education on it you know port wine is a fortified wine and by fortified what it means is is that they've taken uh, brandy and added it to wine to young wine in order to prematurely stop the aging process or the fermenting process so normally wines get to 10 11 12 percent ABV uh, but a wine that's fortified usually is allowed to get to about seven percent and then as that brandy's added in at the high alcohol content, because brandy's a, a distilled spirit, okay. it causes that fermentation to sort of halt. So it keeps that, that sweetness, that residual sugars that are in there. So uh, port wines, and kind of, that you know, that goes back to the days of, you know, the British Navy and traveling on the open seas and, and you know, and, and trying to keep wines fresh for long travels. So anyway, the, uh, the port wine, the tawny port wine, how it differs from the ruby, it tends to pick up those uh, those barrel aged notes you know same as bourbon it, it kind of gets a little bit darker a little bit uh, richer uh, it picks up those those oak notes it becomes a little bit uh, you know typically a ruby port's a little more red and a tawny port is a little more burnt orange okay I mean you could see a distinctive color difference yeah. I do realize that this is closer to cast strength than the regular uh, offering but what you did point out when you brought the bottle over is some significant differences also in the bottle design this is kind of white print on the bottle, while this is has some nice gold foil on the front of the bottle, which is really nice. We'll, we'll have some close-ups in a second of the bottle. You guys get a better look at it. Uh, also, the labels on the side are a bit different now. Uh, they're being a little bit more transparent as far as what's in the bottle, which I love as a, as a whiskey guy. They still have the angel wings on the back. Still have the angel wings on the back. Uh, but, you know, they're really proud of this new bottle design. You know, it really takes it, I think it steps it up a level. You know, and their seller collection released, releases, well, it released about the same time last year. Yeah. And then this year. But one of the things they wanted to make sure everybody understood was, is this is not an annual release scheduled for early spring or late winter. Okay. This is something that they're going to do when it's ready. So last year they released a sherry finished right. special release. That was wildly. That was, that was, in my opinion, I thought one of my favorite uh, Angels Envy releases because it had Angels Envy. Typically, for me, is a little bit on the sweeter side. I know a lot of people do like that, but I feel like the sherry cask finish that they released was a really good balance of having the sherry cask finish, that flavor, that fruitiness to it, but also balancing out the able to still taste the the bourbon attributes in right. there as well. Yep. So I'm hoping we get some of that in here, but. I figured it'd be fun to do a quick comparison of the uh, the regular Ruby Port versus the brand new Tawny. Actually, you know, when they presented this to the media event we were at, okay. they did exactly that. Okay, perfect. So they presented both of these side by side. First, the standard release, and then the seller release. All right, so let's get some pours. Let's, let's go do on. it. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, so we're back. We have our Angels Entities poured. We have our regular Ruby Port here on the left, and we have the new release, the Tawny Port, here on the right. So... What do you say we start off with the regular release? I'm ready. All right, here Let's we go. Do it. I always get 
bubble gum <laughs> on the nose on this you know, one. It's kind of funny because it is it the uh, is it kind of the uh, the cornstarch bubble gum the what what is it? The... Yeah, when you I always remembered it back when you opened up an old uh, pack of baseball cards mm-hmm. and you take out the stick of gum and it's got the powder all over right, it or exactly. bubble tape. Bubble tape. I think you're talking about bubble tape. Definitely a bubble tape aspect to it. But it's sweet. It's definitely it's sweet. It's super sweet. And it's got that fruity nose to it. I feel like Angel's Envy is a great gateway bourbon yeah. because it's pleasing. It's very sweet. It can kind of, you know, I don't drink Angel's Envy personally a lot, especially this one, uh, because it's just way too sweet for me. But this is how I got my mother, my cousin, they all got into bourbon through this bottle. So thank you, Angel's Envy. Absolutely. Still get a little oak on there. A little bit of oak. But you know it's it sets itself apart a little bit. You can get that you get that finish on there. Yeah, absolutely. But more of that bubble gum flavor, though. Yeah, I think that's a that's kind of the dominant note there. I think. Definitely. All yeah. right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Man, solid. It is. It's just a solid. It's definitely on the sweeter side of a bourbon. That bubble gum note definitely comes through. Get a little bit of oak there. There's also a little. bit... I get a, a tiny. Tiny bit of nuttiness in there too. I yeah, think. there is some nuttiness. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know which one, but maybe a maybe an almond or a. I would say a sweet almond. Yeah. Maybe maybe like a honey roasted peanut type yeah. thing, but not as dark. It's still very light. Right. Mm. It's it's light and refreshing at the same time. It's it's sweet. It's um it's definitely a sipper. It it it's a. Uh, it's a solid. It's drink. a definitely solid bourbon. It's an yeah. easy sipper. Like I said, it's something I don't go to normally because of uh, the sweetness to it, but. I haven't had this in a long time, and I'm kind of enjoying it a little bit more than I remember enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. It's kind of nice. I don't know if I would sip this every day, but I can see why a lot of people love this. You know, it's a good one to have on your bar at home if you've got uh, friends or family over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, somebody that's uh, just now entering bourbon, like you said, a gateway bourbon. Uh, that's an easy way to kind of ease them into that uh, into the bourbon world. Yeah, the gateway as a gateway bourbon, this thing works awesome. Like I said, my mother, my cousin, they all love Angel's Envy and that's what now my now my mom's drinking like cast strength <laughs> stuff and this was the reason. That's so, the way it goes, though, right? It's the way it goes. It's, yeah. it's a good entry. So, all right. So now we're going to get into the Angel's Envy before we do that. Take a look at some close up of the bottle. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, this is the Second release in the Cellar Series is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon finished in Tony Port wine barrels. Now, Angel's Envy's oldest single release to date, it is crafted from 10-year-old bourbon and is put through an extended finishing process for 10 months in Tony Port barrels. This is a limited run of just 5,400 bottles. It will be available for purchase beginning on February 8th at select retailers in Kentucky, California, Florida, Illinois, New York, and Tennessee as well as the Angels Envy's distillery in downtown Louisville. This is bottled at 111.6 proof, or 55.8% ABV, with a suggested retail price of about $250. A little pricey. A little pricey, yeah, unfortunately. I so I can, it's kind of the way things are going now, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't really expect any other... Usually it's between 150 to 250 for a lot of these special releases these days. But I can appreciate the proof to this, and there it is a limited release. Uh, you did say the the barrels were pretty pretty special for this, so right. So they had forty barrels, I think, that they needed to combine. And if you do the math, you'll find out that the barrels were a little light. So, you know, it, it took forty barrels to make the fifty four hundred bottles. Oof, that's a you would think there'd be a lot more, but yeah, I guess not. All right, let's go into the nose. I right. can't wait to try this stuff. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, totally yeah. different on the nose. Yeah, so you, you get that richness, that deepness, that darkness that comes from a from an older bourbon, right? This is just like raisins and dates and chocolate. Yeah, so this is definitely a lot of fruit on the nose, um, but at the same time, you get you get that spice and you get that oak mm-hmm. that uh, is not prevalent in this one. So, uh, but not picking up the bubble gum so much. No, there's no... I'm not getting any bubble gum. This is like rich, deep, dark fruits, but I'm getting a nice chocolate note, and I'm also getting a lot of clove, yep. which is really jumping out of the glass from yeah. here. I always have a tough time between pepper and clove. I think that, you know, for me, this one's a little heavier on the pepper. Yeah, definitely some black but, pepper. But uh, there's clove there for sure. You could uh, smell that spiciness. Yeah. But those dark fruits are just so prevalent. So it's a totally different pour than... Completely different. Yeah. This is much more rich, much more dark. There's there's a lot of layers here to the flavor, just on the nose. But 111.6 proof, it's not uh, it's not attacking the nose with uh, yeah. ethanol. I mean, 111 versus 86.6. There's right. going to be a big difference there. 
but yeah, the fruit flavors in this are just jumping out of the glass. Mm -hmm. Really like it. It's really interesting on the nose. That little bit of a chocolate yeah. note is really there is there is yeah. It's it's very enticing, especially with the cherry note in there. A lot of those dark fruits. All right, I'm ready for sip. Cheers. Here we go. Cheers. Wow, bam. You know, that's a whole other animal than this. Right. Wow. So, so definitely, um, you know, the nose does translate to the palate. Absolutely. Um, but it's amped up a little bit. Still getting the chocolate note on the very back end, mm -hmm. but the fruit is just all spice and fruit. Yeah. Black pepper, as you mentioned. Getting this uh, tingliness on the, right in the front of the tongue there, that pepperiness, that kind of that prickliness you get on a, on a spicy or bourbon profile. A lot of baking spices coming here. It's, it's more cinnamon and clove for me than anything. Yeah, so I think definitely on the palate, um, the clove definitely rises up above the black pepper. Yeah. I think. But still the fruit, still, and as it goes back, as it goes back, it kind of pauses for a moment on the mid palate and just, it's just, uh, just, really saturates the mid palate with that flavor, that dark flavor. Yeah, let's go for another sip here. Well, wow, second sip got even fruitier mm -hmm. for me. I feel like the more this, you get some air into this, the more the fruit flavors of the tawny port start kind of attacking yeah, the palate. The tawny is a little more, um, I want to say kind of darker and savior, more savory because it spends more time in the barrel. Mm -hmm. But um, it, and I think it is pulling in more of that oak spice too right. because that's what's lingering on the back of the palate. Yeah, so this is, uh, mm. you know, it, it, it kind of, in my opinion, it kind of um, spends a little more time than normal on the mid-palate. It kind of really presents itself on that mid-palate. So what, what are you getting on the finish? I'm not getting a particularly long finish on this. No, I think it's. I think you would have to say this is probably more of a medium finish. I love it, the flavor of the finish, but I think it doesn't stick around long enough. Mm. Yeah, you're right about kind of that delay. You get all the spice up front, and then the mid palate, it just kind of hangs around with the fruit notes, and it becomes a little bit nutty, a little bit of chocolate. Yeah, finish just kind of goes away a little bit quicker. It does. Now, you get a little bit of hug from it, mm -hmm. but, the, but the actual finish, you know, it's, it's a great taste on the finish. I just want it to last longer. I think that's it. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. But you know what? The nose translates to the palate spot on. Yeah, if you're, it's one of the, and I've, I've mentioned this on the channel before, sometimes you get a nose that matches up completely with what you're smelling, and that one is definitely, this bottle definitely brings that to the table. Uh, so I don't think this is a $250 bottle of bourbon, just for me, but I do know probably a lot of people that would absolutely love this. It is complex, as me and Jim are talking about. There is some fruit characteristic, there's some chocolate there, a little bit of nuttiness, Definitely a good amount of uh, cinnamon, clove. It's very complex. Um, I don't know. What do you think about it? Yeah, I think, you know, 250 is a lot of money. And everybody has to look at their own wallet and decide if that's what they want to spend. Yeah. But, you know, this does take you on a journey. It's a complex drink. Um, you know, the finish, for me, kind of wraps up in kind of chocolate-covered dried cherries. And I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But it falls off a little too quickly. You know, I'd like to see it last a little bit longer. You know... You kind of say the finish is medium on this, I guess? Yeah, I would say medium. I, I would love to see a finish on this that just goes on and on for days, especially at that price point. But if you're looking for something, if you don't like a long finish, if you like something a little bit smoother and fruitier, this would probably fit the bill for you. For me, at 250 I want palate, I want mid-palate, I want a long, long finish. And even though this is complex and has a lot of flavor, I probably would probably want more out of that finish. I mean, cheers to Angel's Envy for putting out a great release. I think it's good. Oh, it's a delicious release. And, uh, and there are going to be those out there that just run right out and grab this bottle. I mean, with only 5,400 bottles available, yeah. uh, you know, there's not a lot of time to make that decision whether you want to buy or not. It's true. I think it's going to be one of those impulse buys where you actually see one, you're just like, I have to have it. Or, I mean, if they, I think if you're an Angel's Envy, if you really like Angel's Envy cast strength, then I think you're going to love this. Yeah. So that would be my best advice for you. Well, cheers to Angel's Envy. Good job done, I think. Uh, Absolutely. Delicious release from Angel. Easily my favorite of probably anything they've done so far. Yeah, for me as well. As well. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, with that, hope you enjoyed this review on the Master Drum Whiskey Room with my special guest, Jim Shannon. Jim, tell us where to find me on the Bourbon Road. Well, you can find us at the Bourbon Road on all social medias. And uh, we are on iTunes, the Bourbon Road Podcast. Tell Alexa, play the Bourbon Road Podcast and... She'll take over from there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely give a good listen, guys. It's an awesome podcast. You learn a lot about the bourbon culture and the people involved in it. Some just great listening. So 
Uh, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram. Find me on Twitter. Uh, love talking to you guys. Love uh, finding out what you think, what you think of this release. If you're excited about it, if you're going to run out and get one. And with that, as I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thanks for coming by. Cheers. Cheers, guys.